Certain iconic images of the 20th century remind us of unforgettable scientific frontiers such as Einstein's discovery of relativity and the mushroom cloud of the first atomic bomb. However, one image has been obscured from its crucial frontier in history, photo 51. The frontier of DNA's double helix, the scientific injustice behind Dr. Rosalind Franklin's photo 51. Pioneer scientist Dr. Rosalind Franklin revealed the double helix of deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, in 1952 using crystal x-ray diffraction. Her innovative research provided the critical missing link that scientists Watson and Crick needed to develop the helical model of DNA. The frontier of modern molecular biology hinged on her landmark Photo 51, but she would be denied the frontier creating credit she deserved. On Saturday, February the 28th, 1953, in Cambridge, England, Jim discovered the way the four bases, the four letters of the genetic alphabet, are paired in DNA. The reason this was so exciting is because it immediately suggested that the way genes might replicate and so convey an immense amount of information from one generation to the next. However, long before Dr. James Watson and Dr. Francis Crick announced their groundbreaking Watson-Crick DNA structure model, DNA itself evolved from decades of research. The genetic blueprint of DNA had its roots in Darwin with his theory of evolution in 1839, Mendel, who isolated genes in pea plants in 1865, Miescher, who defined nuclein from pus-filled bandages in 1869, and finally Kossel, coining the term DNA in 1881. It would be the 1930s before Avery would prove that bacteria replicated because of simple DNA and not because of the more complex protein molecule. The mystery of how DNA controlled heredity continued into the 1950s because one critical link was still missing, its structure. This is what Dr. Rosalind Franklin set out to discover, and in 1952, she created the critical evidence to determine DNA's helical structure with Photo 51. Unfortunately, Franklin's work would find its way into the lab of Watson and Crick without her permission, leading to one of the biggest scientific frontiers and injustices in history. It all started at King's College in 1951. As one of the very few women in science, Franklin had just been hired to study DNA through the process of X-ray crystallography that used diffracted beams to project a crystal's pattern onto photographic plates to reveal its structure. It was a good old boys club working environment, coupled with a resentful co-worker named Dr. Morris Wilkins that left Franklin to work in isolation often. Despite her blunt personality, PhD student Raymond Gosling willingly worked with her and they made an important discovery that there were two forms of DNA the crystal A form and the wetter B form. Meanwhile, Dr. James Watson and Dr. Francis Crick were researchers at the prestigious Cavendish Lab at Cambridge University. They were assigned to research proteins. Franklin thought of them as intellectual butterflies and disregarded their tinker toy model building that was not backed by research. Despite being told to focus solely on proteins, Watson attended one of Franklin's DNA lectures in 1951, not really grasping the X-ray crystallography information as he was more interested in patronizing her. After the lecture, he tried to build a DNA model. Franklin was asked to review it, and his failure was so embarrassing that his lab forbade him to study DNA any further. It was only when Cambridge thought that an American scientist, Linus Pauling, would beat them to the discovery that they were allowed to work on it again in 1953. Watson then visited Franklin's co-worker Wilkins and gained access to her unpublished findings. Upon seeing Photo 51, Watson recalled, My jaw fell open and my pulse began to race. Scientific writer Dr. Howard Markle called this moment one of the most egregious rip-offs in the history of science. Photo 51 revealed a helical structure of the B form of DNA with its X pattern. Franklin had set it aside in 1952 and was studying the A form now for confirmation. Many scientists saw her work as intellectual knitting using a rote skill instead of cognitive insight. But this didn't deter Watson and Crick from benefiting from her work as they raced to build their model in six weeks, making Franklin a mere footnote to their work by publishing. We were not aware of the details of the results presented when we devised our structure, followed by, we have also been stimulated by a knowledge of the general nature of the unpublished experimental results and ideas of Dr. Franklin. It was a complete injustice because their work was directly based on her research, not generally stimulated. Cambridge would also need to explain how King's data had migrated to their lab. 
The editors at Nature Journal would solve this problem by publishing a series of three articles announcing the structure. Watson and Crick's would be first, while Franklin and Gosling's would be last to make it look like they quantitatively confirmed the model. In fact, Franklin's article was written a month prior to the building of their model, but Nature Journal would make a landmark edit to her article to further erase Franklin from the discovery. Thus, our general ideas are consistent with the model proposed by Crick and Watson. Even 50 years later, Watson continued to deny Franklin's importance. We never felt she had anything to do with our finding of the structure. And she was not a little person to be at the frontier. However, Crick's viewpoint was more realistic in that Franklin didn't view herself as a pioneer. She just wanted to be a respected scientist and not be discriminated against. With DNA structure finally revealed, scientists could now decipher the code that contained the secret to life, revolutionizing the field, even earning Watson, Crick, and Wilkins the Nobel Prize in 1962. The impact and the injustice were tremendous. Why their breakthrough was so astronomical and so important? Prior to 1953, no one really understood heredity, genetics, how we pass on traits to our children or our grandchildren. I call it a light switch moment because once that switch was turned on, nothing was ever the same. It changed everything. It was a major discovery. The problem is that it wasn't entirely their discovery. Jennifer Glynn, Franklin's sister, noted that Franklin was unaware of how much her work was secretly used to build and confirm the model. She would have been furious, but unfortunately, she died in 1958 of cancer, most likely caused by x-ray exposure, and never had the chance to fight for her place in this frontier. The short-term impacts of Photo 51 actually had a quiet debut. In fact, after winning the Nobel Prize, Watson and Crick were unsure yet how their discovery would impact the world of genetics. However, in the 1970s, scientists were able to read and write some genes and begin test tube projects. Geneticists in the 1980s could map genes for cystic fibrosis and Down syndrome, with in utero screenings now possible. Other gene management techniques identified inherited traits like BRCA1 that relate to breast cancer. In 2003, the government would complete the Human Genome Project. This complete genetic map of a human led to gene editing tools like CRISPR to target certain cancers. The long-term impacts continue to be widespread, as seen in medical, political, economic, environmental, and social areas. The medical impacts can be seen in the multi-billion dollar biotechnology industry. The double helix transformed the field, and according to Dr. Watson, it is estimated that over a quarter of what is being done in modern biological research is rooted in the structure's initial discovery. Scientists can now target many genes that are responsible for hereditary diseases and find cures. Techniques using recumbent DNA have helped to develop vaccines and drugs. Meanwhile, gene editing may help to create missing DNA segments for people with autism. However, ethical debates continue around projects like the 1996 cloning of Dolly the Sheep and the possible discrimination against people with undesirable DNA maps. One of the unfortunate political impacts of DNA structure has led to the development of biological weapons. It has also created political controversy surrounding research that uses embryonic stem cells. Economic impacts can be seen when a DNA fingerprint is used forensically to solve crimes more efficiently or to prove paternity and assign child support payments. Environmental impacts continue to happen as scientists create genetically modified plants. Much controversy still exists about GMOs in our food chain. Finally, social impacts include the use of over 30 million home DNA kits that people have used for ancestry searches for hereditary information. DNA has strangely become part of our cultural scene, whether it be in infrastructure or jewelry. Even though 70 years have passed since Franklin's Photo 51 was taken, former Human Genome Project Director Dr. Francis Collins reinforced how crucial of a frontier the double helix was. It is so intertwined in what we do experimentally and is so central to your thinking that you stop thinking about it. But if it was taken away from you, your whole intellectual foundation would collapse and it would be unimaginable what we would be doing now if we didn't know about the double helix.